what if shadows didn't exist? So I went. I was still fairly big picture with this one. I went. To, I started looking at different um, ecosystems on our planet and how not having shadows would affect those. And the first one that came to mind was dense forests, like the rainforests, because basically the way it works there is that you have your tree canopy at the top, which you know blocks almost all the light going down below, and then you know uh, at the base you have a little bit actually a little bit less life, you know, you have like some fungi and the animals and stuff, but the trees are the ones blocking all the lights because they're big assholes. So if the trees weren't blocking the light like big assholes, what happens? And so you're going to see obviously a big uptick in the amount of plants down there because they couldn't survive before because they didn't get enough sunlight. So now there's sunlight everywhere and you can actually just start growing more and more and more plants out on the forest floor. And Weirdly, I think the plant that would still do best is probably still trees. So you might just have more and more and more trees, even <laughs> denser than the forest rainforests are already. I it's mean, just like a solid block of trees. Yeah, I'm just imagining like a forest that's impossible to walk through. Right. Yeah, and, and this is definitely a possibility. I'm not sure what the uh, like the nutrient limitations on trees are, but I know like the reason why trees are spaced like they are most of the time is that they are, you know, kind of claiming light space. Right. And if the tree kind of blocks out its circle so that it can, you know, that's where its leaves are. And it's the tallest tree, so anything below is just going to die. But now that that's not true, there's just going to be fucking trees. Are they just going to all, like, smush everywhere. into each other and, like, condense into a tree I, block? I think I think it's basically just like like a, like, garden, you know, like, hedge. It should be like a giant block of <laughs> yeah. hedge. Yeah, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only it's, like, 100 feet high and solid wood. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> So I think trees are going to be the ultimate winners. Um, the ultimate losers are definitely going to be um, fungi. Yes. <laughs> so I always knew they grew better like in dark and moist places. And so the moist isn't too much of a problem, but now it's no longer dark. What I didn't know was that the heat and energy from light is actually fatal to uh, most fungi. Uh, not that they just don't grow as well in it and that they you know take advantage of the places where other plants don't grow. No, it just kills them. Um so, no more fungi, which is going to be... It's a good thing. I don't like mushrooms. <laughs> I don't like mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, more room, more room for berry bushes. Fuck the mushrooms. <laughs> I'm, I'm I got that this. summer palette. So, basically, we're just going to have stacked forests. So, which is actually... This is the first time I think we've said plant life is going to improve. No, I, I said it at one point. I don't remember the context of it. <laughs> it, it has happened exactly once in the time. Amongst all the times, we also kill all the planets. <laughs> So now we're like two for like 12 probably killing all the plants. Something yeah. like that. Fungi are still, I think, oh for at whatever, however, whenever we talk about them, they're always dying. They don't actually come up that much. I think it's the only time we've talked about them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's, that's the forests. Um, and then the second thing I looked at was uh, the ocean. Hey, that's something we've talked about. <laughs> we definitely talk about the ocean a lot. So I am going to, spoilers, not going to save the ocean. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So, the majority of the oxygen on the Earth is produced by phytoplankton in the ocean. And they're basically very small floating algae that do photosynthesis. And they hang out mostly at the surface because that's where the sunlight is. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the as you go deeper in the ocean, it gets darker and darker because it's basically... Um, the light is blocked, so that's basically a shadow. Right. So now, that's no longer happening. So the light is now going to penetrate through the entire ocean, which actually is going to look super fucking cool. Oh, yeah, totally. Because it effectively makes the ocean clear. So you're going to be able to see down into the ocean like you can look up into the sky. And the only difference is going to be like the particles in the water are going to act like a little bit of a fog. So it's going to be like a misty cloud that you're like on top of. But you're going to be able to see like down through a lot of it. And there's going to be like fish, quote unquote, flying around. Right. So that's the cool mental image that I'm just kind of holding on to. But what happens next is the number of phytoplankton can now just exponentially increase because they can live at any depth because there's light everywhere. They'd still float to the top, right? Or not? Yeah, they're still buoyant, but like, I don't think they're like, as like single celled organisms, I don't think it takes them much to adapt to being lower. I guess pressure would eventually be a problem. So there is like a limit on it, but. Even the pressure, I don't think, is too much of a problem because they're, they're so small. Oh, they're really so small. Them. Yeah, they're, they're really like just super pushed small. Pushed together, though. And even if it's not exactly these phytoplankton, like you're gonna 
Right, the, yeah. They evolve, like, one-cell organisms evolve very quickly. That's why that you have always update the antibiotics, like, every year, because they just keep producing, producing, and you changing, and changing. Change that one cell, so. So you're going to get a lot, a lot of phytoplankton in the ocean, which is good because it makes a lot of oxygen. I don't know. I didn't calculate the exact amount because the limiting factor, I think, is going to be the nutrients in the water as opposed to the actual amount of sunlight now. And I didn't mm-hmm. know how to calculate that for um, my new phytoplankton world. But I will say, even in more moderate circumstances, an increase in phytoplankton is not good for the fish. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the red tide or any other of the uh, algal blooms in the ocean. But yeah, so basically, as you if you get a big amount of algae in one place, they actually, the byproducts of their um, processes actually makes the water toxic for fish. And oops, we've killed all the fish again. Yep. <laughs> like so we, we got do. a lot of trees. We got a lot of trees. We got a lot of algae. We got a lot, a lot of oxygen. So I guess we can maybe bring down dinosaurs eventually because they ha- we can have that oxygen-rich atmosphere again. But all the fish are dead, which is a bummer. So that – because you said you had that mental image of fish flying around, but they, you didn't mention they were dead. Yeah, it would be cool for like a day and then all the fish would die and you'd be like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I could just, you could just watch all the fish like slowly float up or down depending on what type of fish they are. So yeah, that's that's what I got. Um Kill the ocean, kill the fungi, save the plants. 